Hi, I'm Michael Popa, Executive Director of Mainstream Coalition. Welcome to Chaos Ledge Quick Take Wrap Up, an inside look into what happened this legislative session. Today, we'll hear from Kansas State Representative Marilyn Poskin, District 20. Representative Poskin, give us your quick take. Thank you for having me. As a first year legislator in the minority party, I would have to say that what stood out most was the near total authority of leadership and the power wielded by the supermajority. Although I was able to forge good working relationships with my colleagues across the aisle during committee work and saw them operate rationally to solve some real problems for Kansans. Why then did we send, spend so much valuable time on the house floor debating legislation that were solutions looking for a problem? You know, for instance, House Bill 2183, we reworked many of our election laws, despite the Kansas Secretary of State testifying in committees that our 2020 election was fair and secure. This echoed our Johnson County election officials as well. So why did they push and pass laws making it more difficult to get mail-in ballots returned? As a wife and caregiver of a disabled voter with multiple sclerosis, I have a glimpse into the obstacles these voters face. We should not be making it harder for people to participate in our democracy when there's been no demonstrable problem. Yet when the governor vetoed 2183, four Republicans flipped their votes to override it, or excuse me, to sustain it. How can a bill be good for Kansans one month, but bad the next? Well, when the supermajority exerts pressure and Kansans for Life somehow calls a voter suppression law a pro-life vote, you see the unfortunate imbalance that a supermajority can, can impose. As much of this legislation is the result of the big lie, I'd sure like to see my election bill, House Bill 22, 2278, that provides for injunctive relief if a candidate does not abide by their voluntary statement of fair campaign practices to get a hearing next session. Email the election committee. Um, also, why did we spend so much time on the trans athlete bill, another solution in search of a problem, because the Kansas State High School Athletic Association already has a comprehensive process for determining which team a transgender athlete will participate on. You know, I'm a college admissions consultant, and it's my job to be ahead of the curve in college admissions and scholarship trends. I consulted both my professional organization and the NCAA in this. To give you an idea of how non-problematic the issue is, there are currently five transgender girls playing sports in Kansas, while there are over 1,200 female athletes playing Division I and II college athletics and scholarship, or with scholarships in Kansas. It's a very hurtful waste of our time. Uh, yet leadership refused to hear any legislation that could be germane to Medicaid expansion during a pandemic with extra incentives that could help 165,000 Kansans that fall into the coverage gap. We've now left over 4.7 billion federal dollars on the table, and it's shown that it would create over 23,000 jobs in Kansans. For Kansans, that's a real solution to a real problem that the majority of Kansans overwhelmingly support. It's absolutely, there were wins, and we need to remember them and keep building on them. The top win was also a top campaign priority for me. We passed a budget that constitutionally funded our public education. After spending years in court over it, this budget continues to meet the requirements of the Gannon School Funding Decision. Also included were full payments to CAPERS for teachers and continued funding of the mental health pilot project. We were able to add $53 million to the higher education budget to ensure that we met federal funding requirements for COVID relief funds. There were bad parts of the bill, but the compromise was way better than the initial funding bill. And you know, I watched the legislature pass over multiple opportunities to help individual Kansans who are affected by the job losses um, and difficulty getting unemployment payments from the Kansas Department of Labor. I've been emailed by claimants from all over the state and I could see a common denominator that would keep them from participating in the economic recovery that is now underway. Their credit scores, particularly as it relates to their housing, transportation and job opportunities. At the very last House Appropriations Committee meeting on Wednesday, I was allowed to introduce a bill that would require KDAL to make reports upon claimant's request of all payments that were issued more than 30 days from the date of filing. So their payments were delayed, therefore their credit payments were delayed, and that has hurt their um, credit scores. 
I worked really hard to get all stakeholders holders on board with the idea and with bipartisan support from the chairs, vice chairs and ranking minority members of the House Appropriations and Senate Ways and Means Committee, my bill was adopted as a budget proviso in Senate Bill 159 and passed in both chambers the next day. As a first year legislator in the minority party, I am stunned that we were able to accomplish this in three days. That was a win. You know, there's a saying that nothing ever dies in the Kansas legislature, so we must remain vigilant in protecting our wins. Um, additionally, redistricting is a once in every 10 year process that draws district lines and, you know, says who your representative is going to be and puts voters of, um, you know, certain persuasions in certain districts. The supermajority has made no bones about their plans to gerrymander these lines to regain, like, think the third congressional district and maintain their power. They're saying that part out loud now. The contentious process is already off course by delays um, in the Kansas, or excuse me, the Census Bureau data. You know, I support Governor Kelly's call for a nonpartisan commission to handle this, stay tuned. I love hearing from my constituents. It undoubtedly makes me a better legislator. I can best be reached by email at marylynn.poskin at house.ks.gov or mp at poskin4, the number four, ks.com. Thank you so much, Mainstream Coalition. And thank you, Representative Poskin, for being with us today. And thanks to everyone watching. If you'd like to get more involved in Kansas politics, please visit mainstreamcoalition.org and please follow us on social media to make sure that you catch our next quick take. Thank you for supporting Mainstream's work and for your commitment to do more than vote.